Hello, Instagram world. It's being a day. Technology is not working with me tonight, so at least I have you here and hopefully I'll be able to keep you here. Uh, I couldn't even do this on YouTube, so for some reason uh, YouTube doesn't want to let me go live, so I'm going to have to save this and then upload it to YouTube after the fact. Uh, it's just one more thing today. I'm just telling you guys it's been a day. Uh, so we have Miss Ann Kemp is in the house. Hello, hello. Savvy Outsourcing is here. Uh, Danny is in the house. You changed your username, girl. So hello, everybody. Uh, tonight, we are going to be talking about whether or not you should jump on the latest and greatest shiny new toys uh, in the social media space when new platforms pop up, whether or not you should jump on those. Um, yes, no, maybe so. It's not a definitive answer, but that is the topic of conversation tonight. So if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to jump ahead because we'll do all the greetings and the random conversations uh, and all that kind of stuff. So you may want to skip through that and get right to the topic at hand. And if so, feel free to jump ahead. If you want to sit here and listen to us ramble on the replay, you are more than welcome to. And for those of you who are here live, thank you. You are part of the rambling, so please stay on and join me. Uh, we are going to pop this up here as our topic of the day. And we are talking about should you, if I could learn to type, that would help. Should you jump on the next social media bandwagon. All right, let's go ahead and get that pinned. There we go, and everybody knows what we are talking about. All right. Uh, Eric is in the house as well. Uh, Eric is my co-author on Instagram for Business for Dummies, which is available on Amazon and all major book retailers. Uh, <laughs> Danny is at cheer. I, that's right. And I'm glad you were able to tune in for a little bit. So Danny is at cheer with her daughter. So I totally understand if you have to leave. It's all good, girl. Come back and watch the replay. Uh, Miss Ann Kemp, hello again. Ernie is here. Amy is here. Team Easel is here. Danny switched to her other account and said you now she's here from her Out of My Blooming Mind account. Uh, Shane is here. Um, we've got Wayne is here as well. We've got, I don't even know how to say your name, uh, Della Cuesta, Alberto. Um, Sparkle in My Eye has joined as well. Hello, hello. Uh, we have Serendipity Cinema, Cinema is here. Metropolis, or Metropolis, sorry, Culture is here. Ken showed up. I mean, you're all of like two minutes late, dude. Where you been? Making dinner. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> Ken's always making dinner when I go live. So Ken is here. Um, all right. So hi, hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, like I said, tonight we're going to be talking about should you jump on the next social media bandwagon. Uh, it's not always a cut and dry yes or no answer. So uh, we will talk about that topic in more detail throughout uh, the episode tonight. As I said at the top of the episode, uh, I was not able to get YouTube to stream live. Uh, it like wanted to, but it didn't. It wouldn't let me take like the thumbnail image and it wouldn't actually like go off of like the first screen where you pick the title, but it was like looked like it was recording, but it wasn't like doing anything and it was like all this drama. So we dropped that idea and I just came over here to Instagram. So I'll have to remember to actually save this one uh, so that I can put it up on YouTube after the fact. Uh, if if I so choose, which I'm hoping I will actually get around to doing. So uh, Ken said he's actually arguing with his parental unit. LOL, that's awesome. Uh, Paper Kids just joined us as well. So you guys, um, I'm, I'm going to be completely forthright and honest. Uh, I've had uh, a not so great day. It's been a tough day for me. Um, I've got a lot going on. Uh, a lot of stress for a lot of different reasons, um, including the fact that I'm getting on a plane on Sunday to travel for Social Media Week Coeur d'Alene, um, which is in Idaho. So if you haven't got that yet, you should totally get on that because it's going to be an awesome conference, uh, multi-day conference uh, next week. So I'm getting on a plane to do that on Sunday. Then I come back um, and I've got a bunch of stuff going on the rest of the week when I get back into town. And then the following week, I'm taking off to Maine, uh, Portland, Maine, for the Agents of Change Conference, which if you are on the East Coast and you don't have a ticket yet and you want to come, please come see me. It would be amazing. 
Uh, I also, they have a virtual ticket as well. So if you can't join the Agents of Change conference live and in person, uh, there is a virtual ticket as well. So uh, I've got all of that coming up. I had a deadline for yesterday and a big deadline last week for a manuscript that I had due. I have a big deadline coming up for the end of this week. I've got client projects going on. I have my full-time job um, and I've got a lot of personal um, stress going on as well. So it's it's been a tough day. I may not be my usual happy bantering self. Uh, I might seem a little bit more, uh, I don't know, calm than usual because I'm just completely exhausted. Um, but I wanted to be here for you guys and give you this this episode because I know it was something we talked about. People had asked for this topic. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I gave it to you guys. But please just bear with me um, as we get through this because like I said, it's it. we all have those days. Let's just be real, okay? We're entrepreneurs, we're business people, we're parents, we're humans. We, we all have bad days. Um, and this was one of those days for me. And I realized I like totally had like makeup, like in my hair from when I just fixed my makeup before I came on camera. Cause I looked really bad. So that's awesome. Anyways. Alrighty. A uh, bunch of comments popped in. We've got capable of happiness just joined us as well. Toronto dog walking. Hey, sweetie. Good to see you too. Thanks for being here. Uh, capable of happiness said, uh, check the DM I sent you. It will make your day better. Okay. Good to know. I will check that when we're done. Uh, Gary Zanderson is here as well. John Dawkins walking said, how do you do it all? Um, good question. Sometimes I wonder. Uh, I do sleep, although with Monday night, I got a whopping four hours of sleep. Uh, so that was not the best. Um, but last night I actually went to bed early and tried to make up for it. So, um, it's definitely, uh, some, this, this like three week period is one of those time periods where you kind of go, what did I get myself into? Uh, and I'm really overwhelmed and I'm really stressed out and I'm really exhausted. Um, it just doesn't always happen like this. Sometimes the calendar just gets a little overcrowded and overcommitted. Uh, and I do it to myself and I have nobody to blame but myself for taking on all of these projects. Um, after this, when I get back from Maine, life will be a lot more calm, I hope. I still have a lot of things going on, but at least no more travel uh, through the end of the year. So that'll kind of help balance some things out, hopefully, and, and kind of regulate. But yeah, you guys, it's, and I've done videos where I've talked about, you know, this lifestyle and how I do it and how I manage it. And it's really about really just good time management. Um, but even that, like this last few weeks, I've had really bad allergies on top of it. This week has been better, knock on wood. I'll knock on everything wood, but this week has been better with my allergies, but the last few weeks were really bad with allergies. So then it was like all I ever wanted to do was sleep. So it really didn't help anything because I had all these deadlines and I was like, I'm too tired. I don't want to do it. And then of course you're like on a last minute time crunch because you didn't do it two weeks before when you should have got it done. So we're human. We have to do the best we can. Miss Ann Kemp said, you're the best. Thank you, lady. Uh, Ken Watson said, girl, get some wine. You guys, I'm not even joking. I'm like, I really want, I was like going to have a wine glass with me, but I still have to get this project done for Friday that as soon as I get off this call, I have to jump back into that project because it's a huge project I have to finish. Um, and so I'm like, oh my God, if I start drinking wine now, I'm not going to do this project. I'm just going to be like, F it, I'm going to bed and I'm just going to want to go lay down. So if I do that, I'm not going to get my project done. So I was like, oh, don't break out the wine. If I start now, it's not going to stop. But I'm telling you, this weekend there will be wine. That is that is for damn sure. Um, Donna Gucci is here as well. Uh, Mike is here. Hey, Mike. Mike is at Content Marketing Worlds. Um in Cleveland. And one of these days I want to get to that conference. Uh, it's an amazing conference. I hear nothing but great things about it. I think this is Mike's second time being there. Um, and it looks amazing. And I'm getting all the updates from him and Amanda Robinson, and other friends that I know that are there uh, at the conference. So inbound is going on as well. It's like we're into like full fledged conference season, um, which is why I've got two coming up in the next two weeks, because it's that time of the year. Uh, the kids go back to school and the parents go off to conferences. Um, a guide to consulting or consulting services is here. Hey, sweetie, it's good to see you as well. Uh, and Ken said, so jelly of Mike. I know. I, I really wish I was I was in Cleveland with you guys. I think it would be so fun. Um, but maybe next year. It, we tried to make it happen this year, but schedules just, just couldn't coordinate it for me. Um, and a guide to consulting services said, hey, so happy you're live, live streaming 
on the uh, Bellarine Peninsula. Ooh, that sounds so fancy. Um, I love it. Thank you. I love that you guys come in and tune in live uh, and join me for these calls and conversations. So now that I've done all my rambling and complained about everything and how stressed out I am, thank you for listening to me vent. Sometimes a girl just needs to talk to somebody, even if it's essentially herself on camera. <laughs> But you guys are on the other end of that camera, so I appreciate it. Uh, but so we do want to talk tonight about whether or not you should jump on the next social media bandwagon. So this is one of those things where, you know, you hear all, all aspects of it. You know, some people are like, yeah, like, secure your name, start it, get on there, figure it out, like, build your brand, just jump in there as early as you can and be one of those, like, first people to jump on a platform. And then you have those people who are like, eh, avoid shiny object syndrome, wait until it gets, you know, substantiated, and then you can get on it later. So you have both ends of the spectrum, and then there's everywhere in the middle as well, right? So it's either no avoid it at all costs, or yes, get in early, and then there's kind of the middle range. So I wouldn't even say I'm in the middle range. It really depends on the circumstances. It really depends on that platform, when it launches, your comfort level, who's using that platform, who your target audience is, what kind of content that platform revolves around. So for example, when um, Vine came out you know, years ago and it was that short form video that is now what we're really used to. I mean, stories and Snapchat and everything is all you know very short form video content. Um, but when Vine came out, you know, years ago, that was one of those new things that popped up and some people jumped on it and you got those immediate superstars, right? You got those, uh, video creators, you know, the Zach Kings of the world and those sorts of people who just totally dominated it and used it to their advantage and built these massive followings and massive brand capacity by jumping on a platform when it was new. Great. Now, the thing is, Zach King does super talented videos. Like, that's what he does. He's a video creator. So Vine was perfect for him, and it was a natural fit, and it tied in with a lot of his target audience. So it made perfect sense for him to jump on that. Somebody like me, who doesn't do short-form video content, Vine was never my space. It just didn't work for me. Um, it still wouldn't work for me now. It's not something I've never, I don't think I've ever had a username on Vine. I may have done a username, but I don't think I did even honestly, because it just didn't work for me um, and the type of content that I create and where you know I build my business. So like I said, the answer isn't necessarily a cut or dry. So the things you wanna look at in terms of determining whether or not you should jump on a new platform from that perspective is who's using that platform. So a new platform comes out, right? Everything always pops up new, it's exciting, everyone's talking about it, it's this hot new feature or whatever it is. Well, who's using it first and foremost? This goes for how you pick any social media platform. Who is using that platform? And if it looks like it's being catered towards, you know, the under 25 demographic, if your demographic is, you know, 45 year old women, then maybe this platform isn't for you. Um, and again, a lot of platforms do come out targeting younger demographics. So this is something to keep in mind that a lot of these things, like when Snapchat came out, when Instagram came out, when all these apps came out, they're targeted towards younger generations because typically those high school kids and college kids and that sort of stuff want something new, fun and fresh. They're tired of, you know, where the big platforms are because all of their you know, their family, their parents, their aunts and uncles, everybody's on those platforms. Things even like Instagram now is getting super saturated. So the kids want to go find new platforms where they can hang out, where the adults don't really understand the platform, where they're not hanging out, they're not gonna see the content. They can be a little bit more, you know, in their own private little world, which is totally normal. Like they don't wanna be inundated by their parents and their, you know, aunts and uncles and grandparents and all that sort of stuff. They want a space of their own. That's totally normal. Like psychologically, that's normal. So a lot of these apps come out designed for younger, uh, you know, users. Um, and if your audience isn't that younger demographic, then it may not be the right place for you to jump on that bandwagon. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that all platforms launch specifically for younger demographics. Some, you know, launch for older demographics or some launch for, you know, geographical locations or different aspects like that, in which case it may still work for you. Um, so that's the first criteria, but we had a lot of comments are popping in and I'm ignoring all you guys. So I want to jump in here, uh, take a quick pause and say hi to everybody who popped in. 
Uh, so Brad Friedman is in the house as well. Hey, Brad, good to see you. Uh, James from Singapore is here. Um, and of course, yes, I know you will catch the replay. Thank you for at least coming in and saying hi, and I hope you enjoy the replay. Uh, West Texas Times Photography joined us. Uh, Origami Owl Biz has joined us as well. Evie, my girl, is in the house. Uh, TTPB Rent, uh, or no, Reno Tahoe, my bad, uh, joined us as well. Uh, we got Revolution Vinyl Graphics, Leaders Who Celebrate. Hi, sweetie, good to see you. Uh, Patrick Novak joined us as well. Um, Ask Evie said, hey, I'm young. <laughs> Sure. We're all young. We're all young. We're all young at heart. Let's, let's go with that, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Ken just said I'm old. Uh, <laughs> GPHF2016 has joined us as well. Origami Owl says hi from Salinas, California. Hello, sweetie. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and M81 Media has joined us as well. So tonight we are talking about whether or not you should jump on the next social media bandwagon. So to answer the, whether it's a yes or no for you, the first thing we talked about is who is using that platform. And I said a lot of these new platforms come out targeted towards a younger demographic. So if your demographic isn't necessarily that younger demographic, it may not be the right place for you. Um, and Evie's saying, say, thanks for that snark tone. I got that girl. <laughs> You and I are young. We're young at heart, right? Let's just call it that. Um, but so the thing is, and one of the kind of counter arguments that people have to whether or not you should jump on these bandwagons is that you know, they're like, okay, maybe it's targeted to a younger audience, but you don't want someone to steal, you know, essentially steal your username. So get on there early and reserve your username so you don't lose it. I don't disagree with that especially if you're a large enough brand uh, where it's something where you want to maintain consistency. Like I'm Jen's underscore trends on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, if I want to retain that, if I want that same username on a new platform, it may be smart to jump on and reserve that username. Now, the downside to doing that is that now you have a profile that represents your brand. Not a bad thing. But if you're not using that platform, it doesn't look good. So it looks like you showed up and then abandoned it. So it can almost be a detriment to go in there and set up a profile, but not have a, you know, a significant account, not have content uploaded, not having any, you know, regular interactions or engagement. So it can actually, you know, now people go look for you and they're like, well, you're not here and you're not active and they won't come back and look for you later. They probably won't follow you because you're not active. And so it could actually hurt your first impression reputation on that new platform. But again, it's a catch 22 kind of where you're like, but you don't want to leave your username un like available that someone else can take it. And now someone else can essentially act as your business. Or when you do want to join the platform, now your username isn't available. And you have to change the username to some other derivative of it. So it might have to be like Jen's dot trends or Jen's trends as one word which now I have to like, okay, well, on these two platforms, I'm this. And on these two platforms, I'm this. And that can be really frustrating. So you kind of have to play out that balance for yourself. That's not a, a, a direct answer that I can give you in this circumstance. I would tell you that most of the time with new platforms, I haven't gone in there and reserved my name. I probably should uh, because my brand is more popular and it's not an uncommon thing. It's there's other gens trends out there, believe it or not. Um, not a lot, but there's other ones out there. And so it could be something that would get snagged up. Um, so it wouldn't be the worst idea. But again, I don't like going out there and putting out a bad impression. So it might be something where if you can have the opportunity to write a bio and say, you know, official account of gens trends, not currently using this profile, but come check me out on Instagram. If you really wanted to do that, you could. So people understand. Um, or you might want to, you know, upload a little bit of content, at least so you have something so there's some activity. But again, this gets you into a whole other dilemma of creating content on a new platform that you're not comfortable with. And we're going to talk about that too. So we had a couple uh, comments pop in. So Marianne Nielsen has joined us as well. M81 Media said, speaking of getting that name, is anyone really still using Vero after that initial spike? Uh, I'm going to go hashtag no. Just going out on a limb. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Top Dog Learner has joined us. Uh, Mike Phils has joined us. And Throw Paint has joined us as well. So 
I kind of actually, this is a point I wanted to talk about, um, but M81 Media brought up, you know, do they, when, is anyone still using Vero? So here's this, the thing is, <laughs> this happens all the time. And I honestly don't even remember what this one that just was. Like I read it like literally a week ago and I don't even remember what it was. That's how important it was. But apparently some other big company, I, I want to say it was like Microsoft, but I don't think it was Microsoft, but some other big company is planning to launch a new social media platform that is going to rival Facebook. They're going to take down Facebook. Okay, when you say that, you ain't gonna take down Facebook, okay? I don't care if you are, I mean, Google can't take down Facebook, and Google is like in direct competition with Facebook, people. Like, come on. Most good new apps are going to start out small. They're gonna launch in an alpha. They're gonna launch in a beta. They're gonna roll up publicly, and they're gonna get influencers behind them, and they're gonna reach out and put money and investment into building a platform that attracts the audience they're looking to build. That's how most apps develop and grow. If anyone comes out and says they're gonna be the next Facebook killer, run, run for the effing hills, because no app in in the world is going to get two billion users in a short period of time. Instagram is the only app that has grown at an exponential rate, unmatched by any other. And Facebook owns them, okay? And even that, like, I've been on Instagram for five plus years, and I was a late adopter. And it's at a billion now. Like, this isn't something where you just all of a sudden show up and have half the planet using your app. That's not how it works. So nobody is going to be the next Facebook killer today. That's not saying that another app can't come out and grow over time and be a direct competitor in some way, but nobody is going to be a Facebook killer. And that was, Vero came out and there was the whole like, oh, we're the next new thing and we're gonna take down Facebook and da-da-da. I was like, no, you not. Like seriously, it's not gonna happen. So when an app comes out and says that, I kind of avoid them at all costs. Cause I'm like, you are so unrealistic. It's not even like something I'm gonna waste my time on. You're gonna be gone before I can blink an eye. Which, oh, hmm, what happened to Vero? Hmm, don't know, disappeared. Um, Ello was one a little while ago, kind of the same thing. Um, that was the whole invite only. It was this whole, like, we're going to be the next big Facebook competitor. Mm, bye bye Because nobody can compete with Facebook at that level. And if you come out swinging punches, it's not going to work. So you can probably avoid those. Um, okay, so... Uh, Krista Gerard joined us as well. Ken said, good luck with that. Miss Ann Kemp is doing laughy faces and saying preach. Um, and M81 Media said they rode that fear wave for all of a wink a week, I think. Yeah, I mean, at best. Like, it's, it's just one of those things, you guys. You have to be realistic when you look at these apps. So, that being said, so we talked about, you know, you want to find who's using those apps when a new app rolls out. You really want to think about that. Whether or not you want to jump in there and get a username and reserve your space is something you can think about. I always, 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 I don't care if it's a brand new app or if it's you just jumping on, you know, LinkedIn for the first time. I always tell people to jump on there and use it as a user first. Don't use it as your brand. Okay, so you want to get on there as a beginner and be a beginner. Figure it out. Don't jump on there as a brand and claim to be an expert. Oh, and that's the other thing. A new app launches and overnight there's like a hundred experts about this new app who are telling you how to do everything on that app. And I'm like, really? Because you've had it for all of 36 hours just like the rest of us. But now all of a sudden you're an expert? Hmm, okay. Unless you work for the company, you ain't no expert. Just saying. So get on to these new apps and play with them as a user. See how people are joining the app. How are they interacting? What kind of content are they creating? What's getting better, you know, engagement? If it's a video platform, then figure out what kind of videos perform best, short form or long form. Do you want audio, no audio? Do you want music? Do you want voice? What do you want? If you're doing photos, what kind of photos do well? If it's, an, if it's text only, is it long form, short form? What works best? Learn as a user, get out all your kind of learning curves, and then, jump in there as your brand. So don't just jump in there as your brand and come out swinging and look like an amateur and not have any idea what you're doing. Go in there nice and cautious, figure it out, and then when you come out swinging, you come out with the right content. You actually come out and say, this is how this works. So a perfect example of this um, is when IGTV launched. 
So IGTV came out, which first of all, they actually, because it's owned by Instagram and they have a whole platform behind them, they had a bunch of influencers. They had a bunch of brands that they coordinated with that already had a ton of content already created for IGTV in a good way. But the rest of the world jumped on IGTV and created shit content. Absolute crap. Because they had no knowledge of how to do this. They didn't think long-term strategy. They said, oh, this new thing is out, vertical video, long-form video, okay, let me do it. And they would go on camera or record stupid things or splice together weird old videos and make a video for IGTV. And it was crap content. There was no strategy. There was no concept of how people were going to navigate through this content. There was no right, like understanding of what the interactions would be. There was no understanding of how to craft your captions and put hashtags and put links and all of these things in the description. That took time for people to learn and test and understand and figure out what worked for their brands. So everyone came out the door, flooded IGTV with all this shitty ass content that nobody wanted to watch. And guess what? If I look at your brand and you put out this brand new piece of content on this brand new platform and it sucks, I'm not coming back. I'm done. I'm like, well, you obviously aren't going to create content that I like, so I'm going to leave. I'm done. I'm not going to come back and watch it again. If instead you had taken a week to sit there and practice and look and see what other people are doing and create content and test it with your own employees or with your friends and family and say, okay, now I have a good idea of what I want to create. Now I have a good idea for a channel. It's an IGTV channel. If you came out and said, now I know what I want to do, and you uploaded all that content strategically, I would go find your content and be like, hey, I like what they're giving me. I'm going to keep watching. But I wouldn't have done that if you created that random burst of original content that was irrelevant to me, what I'm looking for, and that sort of thing. So you definitely want to take that time to learn the new platforms as a user before you decide to jump in as a business, regardless of when you decide to jump in, whether you jump in because it just launched last week or that you jump in and it's been available for five or 10 years. I don't care. Always jump in as a user first, get comfortable, then embrace it from your brand perspective. All right. So Chocolate Johnny is in the house. Uh, M81 Media, Media had said good points. He's got to run. Peace. Good to see you. I uh, hope you'll come back and watch the replay. Uh, Miss Pity BCN has joined us as well. Uh, Cheval is here. Good to see you. Uh, Ken Watson said, squeeze YouTube video format into IGTV format. Yeah, that was the one thing a lot of people did. They took their landscape videos from YouTube and they either cropped them so they lost like 60% of their video because they cropped off the edges or they took it and so you have this landscape video and all of this black above and below in order to turn it into essentially a 9 by 16 vertical that they could then upload. Which is okay, aside from the fact that now your video is like this big. <laughs> you can't watch it. Like, that's why people turn their videos sideways so they can watch it full screen because when you're watching it across, it's just so tiny. So it was not a good fit. It was not a good translation. So... Then I also want you to think about as the next step of whether or not you should jump on the next the next kind of big bandwagon, the next shiny object, that sort of thing, is your capacity for multiple things, basically time and content. Do you have time? Do you have the capacity? Do you have enough content to jump on a new platform? I talk to clients all the time who come to me and they're like, well, so-and-so said I need to be on this platform and so-and-so said I need to be on this platform and this expert said I should do this and this expert said I should do that. And they're like, they're under this pressure where they have to be on every major platform because all of these experts are out there saying you have to be on that specific platform and that they all say that about whatever platform they're, you know, famous for. For the record, I do not say everybody has to be on Instagram, just saying. But it's one of those things where they feel this pressure where they have to be everywhere. And oh my God, no, like you don't, don't even like most of you that are watching this, most business owners that I work with and talk to are small business owners. You're a small team. You may be a team of one. You may be a team of three or four. If you do not have the bandwidth and the capacity to add another social media platform to your, your toolbox, don't do it. I don't care if it's the hottest, newest craze. Don't do it. Even when it came to like the IGTV thing, I told people, I said, go on there. You, you have a channel because if you have an Instagram account, you have an IGTV channel, essentially. I said, go on there. You know, if you really want to 
up, you know, upload your channel, download the app, it'll launch your channel for you. You can upload a video, get, you know, one post a month, create one video a month that's like, you know, a two minute video, something that's easy to create just so you get in there and start creating content just once a month. But it's like, don't feel like all of a sudden you have to go out there and create 10 new videos for IGTV. Like, that's insane. If you can't create 10 videos for your YouTube channel where you already have hundreds of subscribers and where you already have an audience, why should you have to go create tens of videos for your IGTV channel now? Like, if you can't do it for something you already have established, you're not going to be able to do it for something you don't have established. So... Figure out what your time constraints, resources, and capacity are. If you have the ability to create that content and you have the time and you have, the, you know, the resources, great. Jump on that bandwagon, get in there as an early user, get comfortable with it and make the best of it. If it's something where you're like, oh my God, I have anxiety even thinking about it, then don't do it. Okay? It's all right. If you're currently using Facebook and Twitter and you're maxed out on capacity, stick with Facebook and Twitter. You're fine. If you want to add the new shiny object thing, if you want to add Instagram or you want to add LinkedIn or whatever it is down the road, then do it when you have the time and the capacity. Because the last thing you want to do is join another social media platform and then join another one and then join a new one and you're haphazardly managing all of them because now you don't have enough time, you're spread too thin, your content isn't going to be quality content because you're just rushing to be like, oh, I haven't posted in two weeks, so let me just throw something up there. And you're rushing out content rather than being strategic, rather than giving it the time commitment that it deserves to create quality content and really build a community. And that's the key, you guys. I don't care how many platforms are out there. Find out where your community is. Find out where you can create content that aligns with that community and give them the best thing you can give them. If that's Facebook, if it's a Facebook group, great. If it's Instagram, wonderful. LinkedIn, go for it. Go where your audience is. Create the quality content. When the new shiny object pops up that everyone's all of a sudden talking about, take a hot minute. Think about it. Think about all the things we talked about tonight. Whether or not this is something you should be doing, whether your audience is there, what kind of content it is. Again, I create written content. That's what I do. I do these videos because it's one touch. Live, done, save, over. That's it. I don't have to do any editing. I don't have to do any extra work. It makes my life easy and I can listen to myself talk for up to an hour. But I don't create a lot of video content. That's not my niche. That's not my, my forte. I don't like creating a lot of video content and most of my audience doesn't watch a lot of video content. So the next new thing that pops up with something like Vine, I would be like, meh. Not really for me. And I wouldn't jump on it because I'm not going to create video content. Now, if something came up that was much more written content, that might be more my speed. So you have to figure that out. Go through all of these different things that we've talked about and decide if your audience is there, if you have the time to be there, if you can create the type of content, then get in there, get in early, reserve your username, try it out as you know, a user first, get comfortable on the platform, Figure out where your happy space is in terms of how people interact and, you know, engage. Are they liking things, commenting things? What are the terminologies, that sort of stuff? And then embrace it as your brand. All right. So we had a few more people pop in, a few more comments. Uh, we got Aaron's Life Essentials is here. We got Polina. We got Natural Belle Femme. Hello. Um, Eggleston Designs is here. The Sewing Loft. Hello. Uh, the Silent Film Group has joined us. F Marketing Mix. Hey, hey. Uh, good to see you. Um, so yeah. So really, that's all I have to talk about tonight, you guys. I kept this one short and sweet. Um, so I'm not going to max out the hour because I'm not going to just ramble for the next 25 minutes. Um, but for those of you who tuned in late, if you want to get all of those tips, everything we talked about in the last 35 minutes or so, feel free to come back and watch the replay. I will have the replay up here for 24 hours. Um, then I will upload it to YouTube sometime, hopefully in the next couple days when I get around to remembering to do it. Since I'm not streaming on YouTube, because for those of you who tuned at the top of the hour... I did not have fun with technology today. So hopefully the next time I do a YouTube video, hopefully it works. Um, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, as always, you can find me everywhere as Jens underscore trends. Uh, if you want to join my Facebook group, uh, which is Jens Trends in social media, if you just go to Facebook and look for Jens Trends, you'll see the page, you'll see the group, uh, and you can request to join the group then uh, 
I will let you into the group. We talk about all these things and more. We talk about breaking news. Uh, it's a very great safe community to ask questions from beginners to expert. We have lots of people that will chime in and offer support. And we talk about all the newest and greatest things in social media. So feel free to come join me in the Facebook group. Um, and Francisco said, oh, I will. Uh, Ken Watson said, Nomad Rush finish doesn't feel right. I know. Usually I'm like, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. <laughs> But not tonight, I gave myself time. Uh, Revolutionary Vinyl Graphics said, thanks for all the great info, my pleasure. Thank you for staying and watching. Uh, Toronto Dog Walking said the same thing, right, Ken? Uh, in terms of Nomad Dash. I know, I feel like I'm leaving, like, I'm leaving you guys hanging. Like, we should, we should still be going. Um, that being said, the episode we did two weeks ago with, uh, with Mike, um, I still have to upload that to YouTube. So if you didn't catch that, we did talk about uh, APIs what they are, why they're good, um, and, and what it means kind of in a non-techie way. We really broke that down. It was a great call. Um, but I haven't uploaded that one to YouTube because they actually had to screencast it in two separate videos. And like I said, I'm a one-touch button kind of person. Like, oh, right, it's done, it's uploaded. Well, now I have to take those two videos. I have to merge them together um, and stitch them at the right place and then go ahead and save it and upload it. And I just, you know... I've been busy. I told you at the top, I've been busy. So I will get that video up, I promise, uh, for those of you who didn't catch that one two weeks ago. But thank you for everybody for watching. Thank you for bearing with me today. Uh, I will most likely be back in two weeks. Um, I will actually be in Maine for the Agents of Change in two weeks. So if I can go live, um, I will. But I know I will be at dinner at 7.30 Eastern, so I will either maybe go live earlier or I may do it on Thursday. So stay tuned to my stories. I always announce in advance on my stories when and uh, when I'm going to go live and that time and what the topic's going to be. So bear with me with my travels uh, in the next episode in two weeks, and we'll make sure that we uh, we get you guys all looped in. And I'll probably be talking about all the agents of change type stuff or things that are going on around that conference. That'd be a good topic, huh? All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, a guide to consulting services said, time to say goodbye. Have a great night uh, or day for the Aussies. Uh, Miss Uncamp said, thank you for your time. I love you guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in two weeks. Bye.